Oke, and welcome to this prominent Vertical landmark called the Big Rock, or Oketok in Black. A wonderful place to acknowledge the traditional territories where my history show is filmed. Welcome to the History Wranglers History Show. Where Alberta history is featured, don't you know? Welcome to the History Wrangler High Noon Summer Alberta History Show. It's great to have you here. Now, come with me. Here we go. Come on now. On this week's episode, I'm going to share the story of a famous cowboy named Pete Knight, the first cowboy inducted into the Canadian Rodeo Hall of Fame in 1981. Pete Knight moved to Crossfield, Alberta in 1914 from the United States, and he won second place money in bronc riding at a hometown rodeo when he was only 15 years old. Among the many awards won by Pete Knight was the prestigious Prince of Wales Trophy which was handed out at the Calgary Stampede to the champion Bronc Rider. Once a cowboy's name was on the trophy three times, it was his to keep. This inspired Pete, and he succeeded in winning the event in 1927, 1930, and the trophy was his to keep with another win in 1933. The Pete Knight Arena in Crossfield is named after him. Pete is still regarded as the greatest Bronc Rider of them all. He loves a rocky mountain, it's with all his heart. What he wants to share, what he thinks is chic. Alberta's highest mountains and name of their peaks. Alberta's highest mountains and name of their peaks. Alberta's highest mountains and names of their peaks. All right, take it away, Mountain Mark. Yeah! Hello, I'm Mountain Mark, coming from the base of Mount Kidd in Kananaskis Park. Now, I love sharing my mountain peak history, and without further ado, it's time to start. One of my favorite Alberta mountain peaks is I Mountain, which stands 3,243 meters or 10,640 feet tall. It was named in 1913 by the Interprovincial Boundary Survey Team. In regards to where the name of the mountain comes from, it's either from the I family or from that famous Scottish expression I, which means always or at any time. <laughs> Finally, the first non-indigenous ascent was by H.S. Crosby in 1934. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Mountain Mark from Mount Kidd in Kananaskis Park. Now Courtney is a fifth generation cowgirl. Her family ranch is near Pincher Creek. Well, she's traveled around the world as a stampede princess and loves horses and the Calgary Stampede. And loves horses and the Calgary Stampede. Take it away, Courtney. Howdy. The theme for this Calgary Stampede historical segment is cowgirls at the very first Calgary Stampede. Back at the very first Calgary Stampede in 1912, the cowgirls wowed crowds and the many highlights included Lucille Mulhall of Oklahoma, the cowgirl champion roper of the world, 
who roped a running 453 kilogram male cow called a steer with her lariat from her favorite horse in 52 seconds. Back then, there was also Fanny Sperry of Montana who won the bucking horse event, and to win, you had to ride your bucking horse to a standstill. Next, Dolly Mullins of New Mexico won the trick and fancy riding title, and finally, Flores Ledoux won the cowgirl fancy roping title by first roping a horse while she was laying on her back in a sandy infield, and then standing up to stop five galloping horses with her rope. Yahoo for the history of the Calgary Stampede. Let's get the hoop, 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 for the green over in the doop. You are welcome in your sneakers or cowboy boots. Let's give a hoop, 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 for the green elder in the doop. Now sit back and learn some farming history. That won't cost you any loot. of our great province, which is home to the Leduc Heritage Great Elevator Museum, which has been an historic site since 2003. My name is Rebecca Canal, a proud member of 4-H, and did you know that the 4-H has been around in Alberta for over 100 years? It's now time to share some 4-H and Alberta agriculture history with you, and here it is. <clears throat> in 1917, after the first junior pig club was started in Old, pig club started to Stony Plain and Graydon later that year. And by the end of 1918, there were a total of 15 clubs and 255 members. All thanks to the great efforts of William Elliott, the principal of the School of Agriculture at Old. This led to swine judging competitions at school, fair, at school fairs where the top three club members were chosen to represent their club at judging competitions in Calgary and Edmonton. In regards to Alberta agriculture history, back in 1786, in what is now Alberta, the garden at Charles Boyer's fur trading post on the Peace River near Fort Vermilion produced turnips, parsnips, carrots, and potatoes. <clears throat> thanks for joining me, and a special thanks to all the terrific farmers and ranchers in Alberta who feed us all. Please, yes, number eight. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause. Hector's gonna ask you a question right here. Bring it up, girl. We got a high five, so that's amazing. All right, here we go. The question and answer is yours. Here we go. So how many times have the Edmonton Eskimos, that was my team, won the Grey Cup, and how many Grey Cups do you think I played on? And the four options, please. Here's your options. Number one, 15 times, and I played on five winning Grey Cup teams. 10 times, and I played on four winning Grey Cup teams. The third answer is 14 times, and I played on six winning Grey Cup teams. And the last choice is 22 times, and I played on 20 winning Grey Cup teams. All right, let's start that countdown, Ray. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one! Let's go, It's 20 right. No. No. Oh, okay. Come on down to South Team, okay, you guys? You have three seconds to try to guess. Let's start that countdown. Ready? Three, two, one. What's your answer? All right. What is the answer, please, guys? Five? Five the answer? No. No. Do you guys still a point? Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Still a point. Nice and nice and done. And what is the right answer? I played on six Grey Cup winning teams, and Eskimos have won it 14 times. 14 times, thank you very much. Well, let us introduce you to Maya, a seven-time world champion. She's won more than 200 gold medals, and we'll share how Alberta woman got it done. Take it away. And we'll share how Alberta woman got it done. Thanks for the introduction and the opportunity to share the achievements of the remarkable gold medal winnings. In this segment, I would like to share the accomplishments of the one and only Cindy Klassen, speed skating sensation. Firstly, Cindy's quest for gold started with disappointment 
when she tried out and didn't make the 1998 Canadian Olympic women's hockey team. Thankfully, she listened to her parents and took up speed skating. This led to a gold rush of medals for Cindy. Over the next 15 years, which included countless world records and 46 gold medals, including a gold medal in the 1500 meter at the 2006 Turin Olympics in Italy. She also won four other medals at those Olympics and became the first Canadian woman to win five Olympic medals at one Olympic Games. I'm Megan Cotterell and remember to never give up as there is nothing better than the comeback. Teacher Nassine loves her ice cream and her immigration history as she will share with you today where we came from hip hip hooray where we came from hip hip hooray all right take it away Nassim yeah hi I'm teacher Nassim who really loves ice cream reporting on Alberta immigration history from the historic Markerville Creamery Museum in central Alberta which operated for 70 years from 1902 to 1972. In this episode, I will be focusing on the immigrants from Iceland and how they settled in and around Markerville. In 1875, droves of families began to move out of Iceland in search of a better life in America. And in 1888, the first settlers from North Dakota began to arrive in Tindisil which became Markerville. In 1889, a second group of settlers arrived, which included Stephen G. Stephenson, who would become the poet laureate of Iceland. He was quite the man in that apart from writing six books of poetry and a hundred articles, he found the time to clear his land and farm while helping his wife raise eight kids. That Icelandic group, with the help of the federal government, incorporated the Tindisil Butter and Cheese Manufacturing Association, which became one of the first creameries in central Alberta. Thanks for joining me, and three cheers for the indigenous people of Alberta and all the immigrants from around the world who call Alberta home. About the history corral. It's down at the ranch. Don't tell you how. The Yatsies in a fight wrestle the water well. The Yatsies in a fight just west of that water well. Take it away. Thanks for the introduction and welcome to the History Corral just west of the water well. Now today I'd like to share that 58 years after the last spike was hammered, on November 7, 1885, a Scottish woman gave birth to Roberta Joan in Fort McLeod. She grew up to win 19 Grammys, 3 Junos, Order of Canada and ranked top 10 greatest songwriters of all time. And we know her as Joni Mitchell. Cheers! and have yourself a blue sky day. I would like to feature two rodeo legends, Clem Gardner and the Bucking Horse Midnight. Now Clem ranched in the Primes Creek area of Alberta and his claim to fame was winning the Calgary All-Around Championship at the first Calgary Stampede in 1912. Well, legend cowboy rode the Bucking Horse Bronx until he was 37 years old and can continue competing in both the calf and steer roping events for many years after. Clem also competed in the first chuck wagon races at the Calgary Stampede in 1923 
and ended up winning the championship title in 1931, despite wrecking his check wagon three times over the years. In regards to the four-legged rodeo legend named Midnight, considered one of the greatest bucking horses of all time. The horse bucked off his first Cowboys at the 1924 Calgary Stampede and would go on to buck off Cowboys across North America and even England. Finally, Midnight Stadium Fort McLeod is named after the famous horse. Thanks for joining Flame and I and have a great day. Howdy, I'm the History Wrangler and thank you ever so much for watching the show today. On a side note, I'm actually coming from Little Chicago, a small little town that actually existed. Some of the best schools in Alberta I understand is located just south of Black Diamond and no longer exists. So again, History Wrangler, thank you ever so much for watching the show. We'll see you next time. I'm looking for a pump jack. Have you guys seen a pump jack? Oh yeah, I think I see a pump jack.